Hello, Kareen.club family and members. It is time for yet another training. Today is December 12th, 2022. And you might be wondering, why is she telling us the date? There are certain trainings that I'm going to give you that may not be relevant over time. So I want to make sure that we're stating that this may only be relevant when it is closest to the date today. Today's December 12, 2022. I want to make sure that if this training gets outdated, full disclosure, make sure that you continue to take updated training inside kareen.club because these things do matter and these things do get seasoned and outdated. So I want to make sure that I give you context and preface before I go into the training that I'm about to provide to you today. The foundation of this training, okay, the foundation of the training on how I got my round trip airfare to Las Vegas in February 2023 for $0. I'm going to co-host Credit Ninja's Penthouse Mastermind, and I want to show you guys how you two can do this, but there is a lot of things that you must have prior to be able to hack this credit game and hack this travel game. But since this is fresh in my mind and I just literally did this, I want to show you guys how I did this. Okay. But a couple of contexts before we dive deep into showing you of how I did this. Number one, the foundation of this hack is a great credit score. Not like perfect credit score, but decent credit score at a minimum of 700 FICO score without, and this is a caveat to this, without any derogatories or lates. If you have any derogatories or lates, I encourage you to take the training that was prior to this training, which was the five factors of your FICO score and how to leverage the information. The other thing too, that in that training, I have recommended that you go get your credit reports, look at your credit profile, not just your FICO score, because it's not just about the score. You know, a lot of us get stuck in the numbers, like the score. It's really not. You have to look at the details of your profile and you have to circle those negatives or not so great or inquiries and those are some of the things you need to focus on working, right? You cannot focus. And let me repeat again, you cannot focus on this particular game plan. It's something that you can look forward to that you're going to be able to do if you do not have a 700 FICO credit score. Now, Kareen, what's the difference between FICO and Credit Karma? Okay, let me tell you, Credit Karma only provides you with Vantage 3.0 score. It's not necessarily the most accurate. You can kind of get an idea. It has a lag effect. It's not up to date. You can kind of get idea to make sure that you keep track of your credit. But essentially what Credit Karma is, is just a marketing arm to sell you products and services. And what great concept it is that now they actually have access, like an idea of what you have data points wise in your credit score and your profile because you gave up all your information. That's what Credit Karma is. Now, FICO score, you can either pay for it or you can get it through annualcreditreport.com once a year. During COVID, they were giving it to us more than once a year. So that also changes. Guys, Remember, this is why I said the date today when I started this training, because laws change, game plans change, details change. Some of the things that are in the credit card world may not be applicable anymore. So I always want to make sure that we remain relevant. And if we're not, there is a full disclosure on it. If you have less than 700 FICO score, please, please consult with me one-to-one -one or post a question inside our, inside our private Facebook group. If you do this on your own, it may do more damage and harm to you than good. So be very careful when you do these things. All right. I'm going to show you how I did this thing 
So first of all, I'm like behind the scene on my Alaska Airlines hub. So you have to first ask yourself, okay, what is my hub? Okay. I trust you guys enough that I'm actually sharing the behind the scene of my Alaska Airlines login information. And when you're in, in uh, Atlanta, for example, the hub in Atlanta is Delta Airlines. If you're in Dallas, Texas, the hub there is a different airline. So you, you must understand what, where you're located and what your hub is because your game plan based on those data points are going to change. So we are in the Alaska Airline Hub, and this is how we looked at this, okay? You're going to go to book. You're going to go to flights. And we already have our one-way ticket to Las Vegas to Credit Ninjas, February 14, Penthouse Mastermind. So you're going to always look for one-way ticket. This is the trick that a lot of you, including my old self, did not understand when I'm playing the game of miles, make sure that you check this little box that says miles only or use miles, of course, where you need to go, which is PDX, Portland, Oregon to Las Vegas, LAS. And one adult to 14 anytime. And then I'm going to find the flights and you could see what this mileage plan looks like. And you can do this in any kind of airline miles. Now, I don't want to have a stop. I want to have a nonstop flight. So I'm going to uncheck that. Okay. And then it's only going to show me, it's only going to show me flights that are direct. So my husband and I are actually going to be in this flight right here. Straight shot, two hours. It cost us in dollars six bucks round a uh, one-way ticket. This is why I said it's easier to make a decision when it's only six dollars versus okay versus five hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, one fifty, whatever it is that's larger than this amount. So here seven and a half, you can never get rid of taxes. It will always be there, but I'll show you how to zap it. So we are in this hub. We have Alaska credit card, which is a visa from Bank of America. So you want to not get these, what we call a, Alaska is a co-branded card with Bank of America. These are just two large institutions collaborating and creating a product that is unique to only them. So this is probably in my credit card sequence, like in the thirties, right? Because I was knee deep into American Express. And I'll tell you why. American Express points and any credit card points is the most exchangeable, the most flexible currency you'll ever have in the points and miles. When you have a currency that is only good for Alaska, you don't really have too much freedom. You can almost, not always, but almost guarantee that you can only use it for Alaska Air or the One World Alliance, which is an alliance of a lot of airlines that are collaborating together. You can also book other airlines through Alaska if you go international outside of their hub. So that is how a six a $6 decision and how you can do it by accumulating points into either the credit card or flying. It's faster to accumulate points by actually spending money. And guys, you have a lifestyle. If you have a business, you have two tracks to run on. And there's a lot of strategies that come into play to this. But if you have a business and you're not leveraging credit cards and you're not learning about credit card points, you're not optimizing your dollar that you're spending. Right now, dollars are actually, because of inflation, is less in value than it is on the face value. So your dollar is going down in value. Now, on the other flip side, your points are actually way more valuable than your dollar because points are not taxed. When you redeem your points, you're actually not taxed. Mind-blowing, right? Okay. So that was our flight on the way to Las Vegas. Now, when we are coming back, we don't have much 
points in Alaska because we don't really use Alaska that much. We use it for certain things, but we don't use it that much. We leverage our American Express a lot, okay? Uh-oh. American Express went off. But anyways, so on the way back, we have Delta. Okay, we're going, we're flying to Delta. Delta is one of American Express partner airline. So what you do, okay, what you do when you already have American Express, do not get these Delta cards yet. Remember my Alaska card was like 30th or over 30 in my sequence, right? Because I have a lot of credit cards now and, I, and I'm going to have more credit cards over time because I'm accumulating a lot of points. But these things don't come first, okay? The co-branded cards like Delta, which is co-branded usually either with American Express or Chase. You don't really want that as the first card that you choose. You want a lifestyle card. Let me explain what a lifestyle card is. A lifestyle card is a card that you use during your day-to-day. You don't have to fly to use it. And you want to make sure that it is a flexible and you have more freedom kind of points like American Express. Right here, you only have Sky Miles. You can only spend this mostly with Delta and Delta's airline alliance. You cannot spend it a lot of outside. You don't have a lot of freedom. You're limited into that ecosystem. So same thing. We um, we put Las Vegas in our filter. We put PDX, which is our home. And then we're coming home right next day, but we have the full day in the 14th and then the penthouse masterminds the night on that. And then the next day we'll go to the mansions uh, brunch. And then after the brunch, we'll head to the airport. Okay. We're, we're in and we're out when it's business because this is all a tax write-off. And we also don't have to spend a lot of money. Make sure you check this box right here. So it shows you the miles. Delta is an amazing points system. Currently it says I have 23,420 Delta miles. I have accumulated in American Express about a million miles and I can transfer a little bit at a time. You don't want to transfer the whole thing into Delta because American Express has a lot of partners, right? You don't want to transfer everything into Delta at once. You want to look for flights first and see how much you all just need to transfer for the particular thing you're looking for. So let me show you. Okay. Now, February 14, you see 5,500 only costs 5,500 points. Isn't that amazing? And six packs. This is how it's not difficult to make that decision because it's so inexpensive. And guys, remember I said zero? And you're like, well, why does it say six bucks, Kareen? You said it's zero. Just hang out with me and give me just a little bit. We're probably going to fly around this time or around this time. So I can't remember which one we did, but six bucks. And then we can upgrade to comfort. I don't, you never want to use your points first class domestic, okay? Because it's not the best use of points. You want to use um, your points in business class when you're flying international. So, because when you need a six foot lay flat bed, that's when you really need to splurge in your international. For domestic, you don't really need it. Comfort's great. Main, it's only 8,000 points, is even great, greater because it saves you a lot of points. Or you could suck it up, buttercup. (laughs) I'm only going to fly two hours, okay? I don't need to be fancy in a two-hour flight. I'm probably going to take a nap anyways. I just need this. Now where I'm getting older, older, I'm probably going to go here, but I'll never go here. So look at this. Either way, it costs you more in points, but the dollar is still the same. It's $6 because it's the tax. It's a fixed cost. So let's say 
I've booked that, right? How you can zap the $6 one way and the $6 the other way, the return, the fee is when it hits your statement in the back end. There's a couple of ways that you can actually do this in the American Express ecosystem. Number one, one of your cards, if you use the right cards, one of the cards that we use every single January, we get to choose which airline we want to use. We get $200 credit every January if you have the platinum card, okay? If you want to know more about that, click the resources below, schedule a one-to-one because we're going to need to really look at where you're at. Your data points and my data points are going to be very, very different. And you want to make sure your sequence is properly done. All right, guys. So inside the American Express ecosystem, when you go behind the scene, and I'm already kind of logged out in the American Express, I had this all set up, but I don't want to get in because you'll see all my numbers. Um, you can actually zap those, those fees, $6 fees, in order to get it all deleted using the points. So the first way was you set your credit, you get 200 credit every single year but you have to choose one airline every year. You can only change the airline to designate the 200 credit with another airline once a year, every January. Okay. If you don't call them or let them know you want to change it, it'll just default to last year's airline. So I knew I was going to go this year in February. I knew I was going to 10 X ladies in Miami. And when I looked at flights, American airlines, was a lot of flights towards there with a layover in DFW, which is a Dallas Fort Worth, Texas airport. So I chose the beginning of last or this year, which is January, 2022, American Airlines for my business platinum. And then for my personal platinum, because we are in the Alaska hub, I, I chose Alaska. So that's what I did so that I can zap these taxes when they hit my statement using that credit that American Express gives us. The second way you can do it is because if you're like me and you're doing this the right way and you've accumulated almost a million in points, you can zap it using points. Points are just like money, okay? But it's points... The way that we generate points is we hack it and accelerate it by using the right credit card based on our lifestyle and our personal data points in our credit report, our credit score, how much we spend in groceries every month, what is our lifestyle look like, how much do we travel, where are we going, where is our hub? There's so many data points. That's why I encourage you, if you want to start doing this and you have more than 700 credit score, let me know. You know, I'm going to link my link tree down there and there is a one-to-one appointment you can do with me. Make sure that we do this before you actually look for the cards and do this wrong. Guys, I hope this helps. I hope if you're not there yet, I hope you're going to work really hard and do the work to make sure that you get there because frankly, it's a lot easier than you think as long as you're focused as long as you are circling the negatives if you're not there yet or something that's not so great on your report to make sure you get there, okay? I thank you so much for allowing me to do this training with you. I hope this was very helpful. Remember, do the work and focus because nothing else or no one else will do the work for you.